Tearing out my clothes Yeah, yeah, I wanna spare you from this one But it's so apropos, I'm so sorry Here we go, oh, oh, oh. I think the problems that we got too close And after all, you couldn't stand and let me go oh, oh, oh. I told you to take your hands up on my shirt now These scratches are really actually starting to hurt out I got some buttons missing, never found them I got, got the sewing machine now, now Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jambox Tuned In. That's right. We're doing another one, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. With that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Organic herbs and botanicals, skin care and edibles, wellness for body and mind. The Brothers Apothecary. Fine teas and remedies. All right. Thank you all so much for watching again. Shout out the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. I guarantee you're going to like it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. Hey, what's up? It's Mitch HD. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome back. Yes, Thank good you. to have you. It's uh, you're one of the few return guests, so it's really a true exciting. honor. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, and you know, thank you for uh, thank you for as of today when this comes out, dropping your new album. Man, so excited! I definitely I have listened to it a small amount of times pre it dropping, so that we could do this episode. And I got to tell you, I really, really enjoy it. I mean, it it tearing out my clothes is such a good name. First of all, it really, I mean, the album cover ties into it well. It's a super, super solid experience, and I'm really excited to get on into it, y'all. If you listened to the very beginning of the intro, you already heard the very first track, which is the title track. And I mean, I got to tell you. It's a solid sound right from the start. Like it gives a very, very good idea of what the album's gonna feel like. It's got great space. It really like pulls you in. That bass drop just after the vocals is like really engaging. And I mean the vocals themselves are as well. I mean the track was really melodic but glitchy, and your voice sits in a really interesting space. Like it, it has this like kind of cool mid-range to it, which I don't feel is as common in the genre. So like that was really appreciative. And it, it was like it, it it just the track slaps like that that's the that's the the short version of it from here um but i'm really curious to know what made you want to lead with the title track as the first track for the album yeah well thank you um that's a lot to for me to pick up right off the bat just because you know it is out now and you know i've shown a lot of people it's um i've been pre performing the songs for a long time um but i haven't really had somebody break it down to me like that yet so like that was pretty awesome for me um, so thank you, first of all, and thanks for having me. Um, yeah, the, the title track, you know, like this song, I didn't go into it thinking like, oh, this is going to be the most important thing to like tie this whole album together. I didn't even know there's really going to be an album necessarily. I mean, obviously that's the goal. I'm an album listener myself. Mm -hmm. It's my, my ultimate goal is to have a good full project. But, um, I made the song sort of just on a random day of just going at it, um, trying different things. And uh, once the whole idea sort of started throwing itself together, um, you know, on a lot of the songs I wrote, it sort of just sort of like an idea started happening. And then maybe soon after that, like, you know, I get to the next line that I think is going to come and I see like, oh, here's a possibility for a rhyme or whatever. And it's just like, I see it and I'm like, oh shit, like that's exactly what I needed. Like I was never like, I don't think I thought too hard. There's times that I tried and it was just like, okay, it didn't come out. But this time, you know, on that song, I just went for it and it was like, it just seemed clear to me like how it all came out. And I was like, yeah, like the perfect opportunity for these sort of like low key, like, you know, pun, you know, mm -hmm. punches or whatever that just wrap up the whole, the theme of it. Um, that made sense. And so once I was like, okay, this is definitely tearing out my clothes, the song, mm -hmm. it was just a full picture itself. I realized that that was exactly what I needed to just sort of like, at least give myself a frame to take my feelings at the time and sort of wrap them into one image and present that. Um, you know, it doesn't really, you know, go into all the themes that are seen throughout the, the whole thing, mm -hmm. but it is enough to put you in the right spot. Very much so. And like I said, I think just as an opening track, it really grabs your attention in a lot of ways. And I think that it it has 
not so much like the soul of the album in mind, but it really, it gives you such a good starting point that you have a lot of like hope for possibilities for everything that follows it, just for being a really engaging track. I just thought it was interesting that you would make the title track the very first track. I don't see that happen a lot. So yeah. that was that was something where you're like, oh, just getting it out of the way early. And I kind of appreciate that because most people save it for like the second to last or like somewhere in there to make you want to get to that point. You were just like, no, this is it. And yeah. And once again, it's like I wanted to have a loose enough structure on the rest of the songs mm -hmm. where I didn't have to be like so tight to the outside. But then that just like set the scene itself to, to leave that open endedness. And then again, to what you said about the mid range of the voice that's definitely like i'm glad that like right off the bat there's something you notice because um you know like i'm doing what you would call hyper pop or glitch core digi core on you know it, it ranges from song to song yeah um you know like there's definitely what's for me the thing is it's different than a lot of what's out there and i'm think i think i try to tie it back to like what i am you know used to with you know like what i imagine an album to be um, and you know, I, I can't help but be a little bit lyrical compared to some more just like aggressive sort of sounds that, you know, I really fuck with, but, um, it's just not what comes out when I'm, when I'm doing these sort of things. Yeah, totally. And you know, I, this is a note I technically had for one of the next songs, but this is kind of a cool spot to bring it up. Is it just my imagination or is there just like a smidge of influence from the like 2010s, like emo post pop punk vibe? 100 percent. yeah there's it's like for me i've had many phases of music um you know i'm 27 at this point so you know i started listening to stuff when i was like you know eight and then i got to be an early teenager late teenager mm -hmm. whatever it's gone through the the realms and really all the all the way across the board so the blends are just sort of like free form um and there are times that like you know when i was listening to sort of things like pop punk and you know like lincoln park or something back in the day like i right off the bat like a lot of the stuff that i end up loving i didn't really necessarily fuck with the tones that i was hearing right off the bat and then they grew on me in a weird way and so like at times when i might doubt myself when it comes to tones like i try to see if that's an avenue that would would open up for mm. other people there hell yeah no i dig that and yeah like i said it's not that it was the most prominent element there but every for some reason there was always just the circling back thought of like there's just that little bit of a hint of it in a handful of spots throughout the album so i definitely wanted to bring that up because it was something i wasn't sure that i was hearing correctly so thank you for thank you yeah. for confirming that for me yeah there's many spots where you might hear something like that and it's it, if you're hearing it it's probably what it is there's a lot of intention like there's times i didn't go into it looking for that but when it comes out it's it's true to you know what i pull from oh yeah all right, now we're going to do something a little bit different than we normally do on these. And we're going to take a quick second and we're going to check out 15 seconds of the next track that I want to talk about, which I believe is called Again. So we'll be right back, y'all. All right, and we're back. And that was again. And like I said before, it did not disappoint. The first track definitely left a lot to be expected. And no doubts that one definitely nailed it. I enjoy the fact that it was very like, it had a very modern feel, but at the same time, it was still very like melodic. That guitar opening line really kind of just grabbed you right away. That's kind of what made me say my comments from before. And I loved how simple the hook was it was it just the again 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 line that went like the first time i caught it was actually the second time it happened because it was so smooth but like once i once i heard it i went back to the beginning and i was like oh this is nice this is nice I, i'm kind of curious what was what was your like decision for the approach for that song yeah um that was one that just came out and um, I'm somebody who always leans towards like if I hear something that's too repetitive in a way that I think is annoying or like too simple mm -hmm. like uh, especially when I was younger I just had like a slightly immature feeling of just like oh like I want more yeah and but then I would always end up like there's just certain songs that end up just like smacking in a certain way and I'm just like oh no they got me like it doesn't need to be anything like as long as it just hits in like the right way and so I didn't like I don't like 
you know, once again, seek these things out. But when it's like right in front of me and I just sort of hear him say, oh yeah, like I'm just going to, you know, double down on the again. And, um, you know, it's kind of like the, just run it back. Like it, it just plays into the theme of just like, you're like, okay, it's like a one night stand, but then you're like, hold up, wait, like, let's run it again and again and again. And you're yeah. just like, wait, wait, how do we get here? Even if you're just, and it's not the same every time, but it's the same every time. And then it's just, you know, um, there's deeper layers to, you know, to the whole theme of the song, especially if you've seen the video, it's like, um, I talk about what I'm wearing and stuff like that. And obviously the, the album's about tearing out my clothes. And so, you know, I, I haven't always had always the best style or clothing, but I've always had to try to like make my way as far as, you know, um, social situations, whether it's with other like, people or just in relationships. And so part of the song is about, you know, what you have to do when you don't have money necessarily or maybe when you focus your money on other things because like you know you don't necessarily not have the money but you just don't have the style because it's not what you're doing yeah um so you just got to like work with it and it's like the whole back and forth of um you know like it's cool to try to make it work but then it's just like you end up in, in a position of vulnerability where you're like wait no like i should have just maybe taken the time to spend a little bit more money on my style or something and I'd yeah. feel better right now. <laughs> no, well, actually it, it's funny in, uh, in the regular life of Jimmy, cause I'm not just a man on the camera. Uh, I'm kind of at that space personally. So I, I appreciate that. I can really resonate with that for sure. Yeah. Especially in a space where like, you know, Portland, the scene here, the people, the things that they, you know, their styles are just incredible. So it's yeah. like every day it's like, I try to, trying to think about it, step it up and be a part of that. And just, and then, and then I step out and I see what other people have done since I've been thinking about it. I'm like, fuck, you're like 10 miles ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could definitely get feel with that with sure. Ugh. English. Yeah. I could definitely agree with that for sure. All right. But I have another question that's kind of similar, but we're, I want to step back and look at a little bit of a wider picture. What was your main inspiration for the album as a whole? Um, so like, you know, my life, I was doing some other stuff. I was in uh, some business-related ventures of my own that are not important, so I don't really want to get into them. They're just too large to like mention it all in detail. Um, but there was a relationship involved in that and uh, since like COVID, and then that ended. And so I was just making music just for fun mm -hmm. and like trying not to just like feel totally insane because it was like, you know, like, I would call it like a modern, like pre-divorce level type thing. You know, it's like you're together to the point where it's like, if it was 20 years ago, you probably would have been married by this point. Yeah. But like, we don't do that these days. Um, and so like, that was a big deal to me. And so um, when the picture of something more solid started to appear with like the number, the, the songs I was making, mm -hmm. um, just to make what you, what you see as tearing up my clothes, uh, that became pretty clear to me very fast. And then I just sort of like locked in, made it happen. And then just been building um everything around that since it really came to fruition oh yeah yeah i mean i i'm sorry to hear that it happened due to some you know more unfortunate circumstances but it seems like you really took that energy and put it towards a really positive force yeah and that's where i mean it started at a positive force it still is a positive force to a certain degree that um you know like not all bridges had to be burned and stuff like that like things are things are good in the world and uh you know but definitely there was uh some some mania in, in yeah. the brain you know so i had to just uh focus on yes yeah, some positivity for sure huh. do you think uh that just not to dig into that those topics per se but do you think some of that situation is like what made it to where the album feels so like varied why there's so many different styles of music on it for sure yeah there's a it's an exploration of the different reactions to being um, upset and you know like the ways of like you know maybe at one point you get dip into the the feelings of the immediate like frustration or like um, disconnect and uh, and then you get into like just you know like if you just go full like okay now I'm trying to trying to just like party or something because that's the reaction where you're like I I'm just trying to like go live my life like I've been so locked up like doing this for a while that like once you go out you there's too much energy and all that so it's like um and then there's just like a larger question of at the end like when you do that like how do you feel about that i mean it's um 
you know, action reaction. So yeah. it, you know, it's a pinball effect. You like, you leave the relationship and then all these sort of things like are one after the other, like, okay, I tried one thing that didn't work. I tried another thing that didn't work. Um, where does that leave you? Damn. Well, thank you for sharing all that. Um, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to check out another track real quick before we get going. And this next one is called Fallen featuring Z Smoke. All right, and we're back again. And I'm going to lead this one off with a shout out to the homies Z Smoke. That's the feature on that first feature in the album. And uh, Solid Jam, I know y'all are homies, so that uh, that lined up perfectly. And the track started out super chill, very like very assuming, and then suddenly poof, very dense. Very dense. Like that bass synth sounded like it was processed with like uh, the bastard child of Sasha's Fatner and Logic 9's Bit Crusher. I don't know where that sound sound came from, but it was really, really cool. And I mean, the track overall was super hype. Like I dig how the, the kicks double time in the third quarter. I thought that like really brought a new energy. And I mean, you know, it's only a few songs in. So continuing to change it up, uh, I thought was really appreciated. What else can yeah. you tell us about the track? Yeah, I mean, for sure, there was a long verse in the middle, so um, there's, like, five different parts to it, I think, mm -hmm. so, like, definitely breaking it up, and then just, like, again, not overdoing the lyrics, um, letting them sort of, like, meld into each other, where, like, I take, you know, in each of the five sections, I might take one of the words and, like, roll it into the next one again, and you hear that, and it's, but used in a different way or something. Mm -hmm. um, that was sort of fun for me, um, and definitely, yeah, Z Smoke, he's a fucking legend, um, he's helped me do everything I have up to this point. Um, and continuing forward, like there's just, um, I owe him so much and there's so many reasons, like you just, he does some crazy stuff. That's all I got to say. Like he's always up to something. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, like the show, all that. Um, but yeah, he, uh, the, you know, the sounds that you're hearing on the beats, mm -hmm. fucking incredible beats by the incredible producers, which all you can find like through, I, you know, I try very well to, um, get the credits out there mm -hmm. like in in depth so any of the producers that you want to go check out go see if any of their other beats are available for use whatever just tell them hey you know mitch hd owes you a lot because that that beats amazing um that's how you can do it um but yeah like uh you know once once the beat comes to you and you, and you feel it and everything like that was that's what those songs gave me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, the track was wild. Um, I am curious because I, you know, one of one of my notes here is, you know, to ask if you'd done the production yourself, which it sounds like you had a handful of other people involved in it. Um, did you try to stick to beats that like came from a couple people? Did you get them from all over the place? How did you go about choosing like the supporting music? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like my way of getting beats up to this point, mm -hmm. and there's different things happening in the future that I may or may not talk about. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, up to this point, I just like literally go on YouTube mm -hmm. and I look up hyper pop type beat. Oh, okay. I'll tell you why? Because I need to look at every single beat that anybody puts on YouTube. <laughs> yep. And I, I scroll through all of them. Sometimes Z Smoke will scroll through the days, whatever, but he usually focuses more like on different art, like different producers that he knows for sure. Mm -hmm. I like to just like every day that I can, I'll go and look at every single one. Um, and that works really well for me, like in this little time frame that like all these songs sort of like can't like happened. Mm -hmm. And so that one just like popped up. We ran it. It was just awesome. Like that's just basically how most of these songs worked. Oh yeah. yeah. And did you record them anywhere specific? Did you kind of record them all over the place? Do you have your own setup at home? Like how'd you go about getting your voice on top of them? Yeah. So, uh, I live in a place that uh, Quagman and oh, Z yeah. Smoke Shout out Quagman. both moved in. Yes, sir. Um, they both moved in to the place where I was living after this relationship. And uh, at the same time, and after a little while, we I, I started working with Z Smoke. Mm -hmm. And we recorded everything for this album. That's me or him. Um nearly everything some with actually uh another artist kai mm -hmm. just a couple songs but most of it all in his bedroom and uh then we had uh hopeless mix it oh yeah shout out hopeless 
and that just says everything about like what those two are capable of because yeah, very much you so. wouldn't know if i didn't tell you <laughs> yeah. and you know it's funny uh, my next question was did you send it out for mixing and mastering so it sounds like you had uh you had that answer already answered and that's yeah. i mean uh, just from a production standpoint because that's kind of that's that's where my bag exists a little more i mean that from bell to buzzer the album as a whole has a really good and consistent quality to it like that was the thing that i noticed is there was never a point in time where i was like hmm this one was lacking you know what i mean like every now and then you get one where you're like why isn't this like the rest of them? But I felt like it really, everything brought this really consistent but unique energy from song to song. And that's really appreciated. So it sounds like you had a solid team of people kind of across the board to work with. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's everything I have up to this point. You know, like I, I do have to give myself credit for the things that I've done. Mm -hmm. There's a reason I can put my name on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, across the board from the you know the graphics that i have mm -hmm. that i use and the you know just people that support me outside of the music um you know like i basically have been raised by a village or some shit like that so yeah <laughs> i mean that's that's honestly uh, i wish more people would look into the that approach versus the like i have to wear every hat myself type of thing because yeah. there's if you're strong enough at what you're doing, people will want to do their stuff with you. And there's yeah. plenty of room. Like you go to a, you go to a DIY show and there's five photographers, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there are plenty of people that are available. You just have to create the space and you have to be dedicated to your craft. For sure. And there's things that I'm like trying to pick up as I go along and I'm trying to move, you know, I've done production in the past and I want to go at it with more like momentum and stuff like that. And like, I want to be able to, you know, just anything that I work with somebody else on consistently, I want to take the reins on yeah. on what I need to. And sometimes I find myself saying something like that. And then I'm like, wait, how do I do this again? I'm just embarrassed for a moment. But like, <laughs> it's definitely important to be educated on all parts of your craft. But yeah, like just yeah. how like race car drivers need to know how under under the hood works. You don't see them working on their car in the pits. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like that is how that is how you build a no pun intended, but well oiled machine. One hundred percent. And there's so many times in my life where I've tried to do everything myself. And I'm proud of myself for doing that. But like it's gotten me, you know, time after time, like I just should have been working with other people. And that's what's given me my ability, I feel like, to like always be able to find a way to match somebody. Like if mm -hmm. somebody has a skill that I'm like, okay, what do they need from me? Like I'll find a way to do something for them. That's going to be like, okay, now we're like even, Yeah. Um, you know, even if it's like maybe something they're just like, okay, this is like too much. I'm like, I'm just going to go for it. Try to like, you know, like make myself worth something to you. Like um, whether or not it like comes back to me in the right way. Oh, yeah. And so like, yeah, I don't know. Like that's just where I'm, where I'm trying to be at. No, I definitely appreciate that. Now let's go ahead and let's check out another track. And this time we're checking out a song called Donnie Darko. Yes, sir. And we're back again. And first of all, this is officially the halfway mark of the album. We've gotten to track, I believe, track five out of ten. And even though the little plucky guitar sound has happened a couple times, we're familiar with it, you just continue to keep bringing a different experience. And that one had a much quicker pace, uh, both beat-wise and with the vocals. And honestly, at this point in the album, it's my personal favorite. Like, it's the one that just... It hit me right there. It was really catchy. It was really driving. And so for me, it just kind of, it hit all the buttons. I, I only wish it was a little bit longer. That was the only, I was like, as soon yeah. as it ended, I was like, I, I, more. It was such an exciting track. Nice. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about like the thematics of the track? For sure. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I'm glad you wanted more. Cause I mean that that's exactly where I wanted to end it. Um, ah, yeah. ah, you, you got gotcha. me. Yeah. You got yeah. me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it was the year of the plucky guitars mm -hmm. and I went with it at least for the first half, maybe some more later, not really sure. Um, but yeah, the thematics of the song, uh, kind of line up with how the songwriting goes, which is that I start, you know, trying to match up my lyrics to the melody that I came up with 
um, just sort of like gibberish style. And as I'm doing it, I just start to fall asleep. And then I just sort of like have like weird dreams. And then I'm just like, there it is, bam, there's like the words. And so the whole song is sort of like, should have been betting on me only, blah, blah, like strings that pull me. So it's just talking about fate. And then the strings that pull are like, you know, if you're tearing at the clothes, the, the strings are being pulled. So as the strings are being pulled, fate is pulling me. It's making me cold because it's taking my clothes away. And, um, you know, the hook just goes in into just straight into like the just aggressive sort of dissociated feel of, you know, like you're partying and, and th things are happening. They're making you more emotional literally while you're doing that and you're trying to escape but then it's like wait why are you like the escape is at the same place that you're trying to get away from the thing that you're upset about because you know the girl that you're trying to mm. get away from is at the same bar or whatever or something and you're just like what the fuck is going on um and you're already like too you know you weren't expecting that so it's not you're not ready so you're like just you know already in a bad spot um, and then the whole Donnie Darko thing too, of like, you know, it's, you get to a point whenever you're, you know, acting out maybe, um, because you're upset about something that you're not just like, you're, so, you're sort of just watching yourself do things. And then you're like waking up the next day, sort of like, wow, like, why am I acting like this? Like, I'm just being childish, whatever it is it's like donnie darko you're like oh it wasn't me it was donnie darko <laughs> like i don't know what to tell you um you know like what are you talking about <laughs> yeah damn it thank you for that insight on it and i, I want to kind of reference something you had said earlier um when it comes to writing your lyrics how is what does that process usually look like for you yeah i mean um as I said before, it's just sort of like when it's working, like I just sort of like go after it over and over again. So I just sort of like try it. I'm like, is it working? Am I tapped into the thing that's doing the thing for me? And then it happens. Or if it's not there, I'm just like, uh, I guess I'll just go like upstairs and just watch some Kill Tony for another minute or something. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, like I'll just hang out with Smoke and or talk to Quig or, you know, do something else and then I'll just get back, back into it. But for sure, it's like, I, I take every opportunity in morning, night, day to just sort of like look back at the song and find out. But usually by the third or fourth try for any song, like something will come to me or I'll just be like, okay, this song is not really going to work. And then once I write something too, like I'm not going to go back and rewrite something. It's just like, okay, no, like this beats over, this song's over, I'm yeah. out, like next one. Oh, yeah. And do you ever like, do you ever take like the mumble approach where you like find like the sound that words should sound like and then make words that they're supposed to sound like after? 100%. It's like everything that I feel like has worked for me has been when I really let the melody um, and the rhythm like come out to the fullest degree and not worry at all about the sounds or just like focus on like, you know, I've broken down the things that I like, the sort of sounds that I hear, and then there's some sort of middle ground of what my subconscious will match that up with. And then, you know, I get pretty close to the full actual sound, and then the lyrics usually will be almost, almost like would just fit perfectly in with the original yeah. sounds. Hell yeah. No, I appreciate that for sure. Yeah. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive into another track. And this next one is called Venom. Shut up, love. Think I'm tough, but I'm dead from your touch. Yeah, it's messing me up. All my powers are gone. I'm on love. And we're back again. And this time we're talking about Venom. And I mean, it, first of all, it had a lot more swing to it. Uh, those opening pads were really bouncy, but the drums were still very like, hyper pop dmb ish you know very like and i mean uh, but but they were subtle like they didn't feel like abrasive or up at the front um and i did not expect the like afro beat vibe that happens in there that was really exciting for me and uh fun fact it was the longest track on the album clocking in at two minutes and 34 seconds yes, uh, indeed. what was uh what was some of the inspirations for like the arrangement on that track yeah, um, that one, 
it has sort of like a simplistic style again to like the arrangement of the lyrics and the structure. Um, sort of like, you know, focus more on imagery um, and just drawing like, you know, kind of like a simple uh, comparison of just the idea of, you know, Venom and obviously Venom in nature is not a good thing. But then it starts talking about it like, oh, like it's, it's good medicine sort of thing. And it's like, okay, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could think about that. And actually like one of my favorite uh, strains of weed is Venom OG. Mm. I have a, a clone of it. It's one of my favorite. And uh, so like, that's kind of like, I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, you know, I'm fed up and my head won't shut up. It's very simple. Um, think I'm tough, but I'm dead from your touch. Um, it's just like, you know, literally the word like tough and touch are so close to each other if yeah. you look at them on paper. Mm -hmm. And then it's like a little fang. Oh. <laughs> oh. So it's, you know, it's like little things that I didn't even like think about until it, like it just was like, oh, touch, tough. And I was like, so good. <laughs> I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> you know, I, I, seeing as we've gotten this far into it, I can definitely say this now. I really appreciate the small nuances of observation you have of your own album. Like all these little moments that you, you are able to like acknowledge from individual, like song to song, not even just as a main element. And that I, I think that's really cool that you can take the time to like appreciate your own work on such a deep level. It was almost, it was a strange self-discovery of that, like, and that's, I, that's kind of just, I, I chased the rabbit hole of, like, I would write, and then when I found something that felt like it was worth it, just enough, and then, like, the little pieces would add up, that's where I found, like, okay, this is, I was meant to sort of just find this song and make it happen. Um, and, you know, furthermore on that song, you know, like, um, I talk about, like, you can't escape it with distance no matter... Um, you can't build up a resistance. You can't escape it with distance, no matter how desperate. Um, you know, you're thinking about Venom, like once it's in your blood, like you can't run away from it. And yeah. it's more than like Venom's more than just like a substance, like substances you build up, like, a, you know, an immunity to an immunity to a, a relationship, tolerance. a tolerance, yeah. but like love, that type of sort of thing. Like that's just like a deep, like human thing that like you can't escape it. Like it's within you. Like you just got to like roll with it. Um, and sometimes it just like gets in your blood and just like, and venom too, like is so cool. Like when it like touches your blood, what it does is it just solidifies your blood. So if, if it oh. touches it, it just goes, and then it's like your blood just like clots up and it's like, you can't, like, it's just crazy. <laughs> that makes the character venom make so much more sense. Now I had never realized that that's, Huh. Huh. Shit. I'm gonna have to change the name of the song. Marvel's really putting gonna two and two together on that. that. <laughs> <laughs> you just made me realize something bad. Oh no. Well, <laughs> I hate to tell you, but the album's already out. But it's still a solid track. I think it'll forgive you. Oh yeah. But, but yeah, the the beat again too though. Mm -hmm. I was so stoked when I found that beat. That um producer, they didn't have like any other beats that were like that at all. It was just like this one off that I found again by just like looking at every hyper pop beat for that like time period. Damn. Um, I just was like, oh, this is fucking perfect. And again, it's not over assuming as far as far as hyper pop goes. Like it's just hyper pop enough. Yeah. Really, it was more of yeah that like Afrobeat like mm -hmm. and uh, um almost reggaeton kind of drum beat sort of thing. Reggaeton. Yeah. That was the word I was trying to look for okay, when I wrote for sure. the notes. Thank yeah, you. yeah, and I think maybe there is still a relationship to some Afrobeat stuff, and there's some other times in my music that that's connected as well. Um, but definitely, um, yeah, I think reggaeton. Yeah, that yeah, no, that is that is much more the descriptive. I just when I was writing these, I could not think of what the correct word was. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I, and I I'm just, there all the time. I feel you. Originally, I was gonna say Latin style beat, and that felt <laughs> that just felt not right. So yeah, I, we're in the middle. I wouldn't want to put that out of my mouth either. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, I just said it. Ah, well, there's no edits in these parts, so it's there now. But no, it's definitely, I, I thought it was a really fun like addition to the sound in general. And I don't feel like that specific sound comes back again in the album. So it's nice that it yeah. kind of exists as its own entity. And it's cool that it was already in the beat. It's not like a change up you had to like, add it in after. Yeah. And there are a couple songs that for me are like from artists that 
are in genres that I listen to more, but then they do a song that has that sort of beat on there. And I like that. And I like the sort of like kind of party vibe that it brings. But then if you don't overdo that sort of like accent, Mm -hmm. um, there's something, there's some potential there. Yeah. And it definitely, it gives that moment a lot of power to kind of exist as its own. Which, I mean, uh, I think that song is like seven tracks into the album, if I'm not mistaken. So, like, again, again, you just, it, it, you're continuing to add new elements throughout your whole sound. And that's, I, I will not stop talking about how much I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but I am curious to know, because, you know, we're trying to pepper in questions about the total album here. How long did it take you to complete the album? So, basically... Um, I had some holdups in my ability to actually make the production of some of it happen. So there was like a time of like intense writing Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I need to make this happen. So like I wrote basically most of the album in a pretty short time, like almost a year ago. And then there's a deluxe album because I had so much time between and it's not necessarily like, oh, I gave you like eight more like super hard bangers Yeah, is more continuous of like the artistic perspective Mm -hmm. Then after that, I've got some singles that I'm just like, okay, I got to throw some crazy stuff down. But um, yeah, like it's uh, it's been a while of like getting all the pieces together to make sure I can, you know, put everything behind this that I believe it was. Because it was like, okay, now I have this. I'm like, I realize how much potential I think it has. So I got to line up all the pieces. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but if we, if, if, if we had to give a rough timestamp... <laughs> About how long would you say it took you? For one through ten, eighty percent of the album took, as far as writing goes, a month. Okay. Um, you know, finding beats, writing to them. There's not that many lyrics overall. I mean, it, it may be from the outside perspective, but for me, it just a lot of things made sense. Yeah. And um, so, you know, like it was very much like an explosive period of time. And uh, then there was a lot of time of like performing those songs, trying them out. Hmm. Um, but there was like one or two of those that didn't come until like, you know, maybe two or three months after the first ones were started. Hmm. But if, you know, total time, you know, a month maybe. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it feels very well put together. So that's a pretty solid amount of time to get an album put into place. Um, now let's go ahead and dive on into another track. And this one is called Way Up featuring Hopeless. All right, and we're back. Let's get the breakdown out of the way. Uh, I appreciate that you had another past guest to the show as your feature. That's really fun. Uh, but now, eight songs in, you've definitely solidified a bit of a consistency in sound. So the addition of another person, other than the first one that was already there, goes yet into the theme of adding something new to it. And I mean, Hopeless was definitely a really good addition. I like his style, and I think it shared well with the track. And the listening experience was kind of back to the front which was really nice because of that. And the track felt a bit more like somber is the word I want to use uh, than the rest of the album. And, and that, you know, and that just kind of gave it this more like settled feel for like the most of the way through the album, which I thought was really nice. Um, and because I had talked statistics on the previous track, that was the shortest track coming in at a minute and 38 seconds. And I guess I'm curious to know because I come from the realm of like bands, where like, you know, it's like everything is an epic. What, how did you feel about writing? Because there's only two tracks that are under two minutes. But what was like, when you got to the end, like, how did you decide that that was just the right length of time for that track? Yeah, I mean, you know, that uh, beat produced by Died in October. Mm-hmm. Um, incredible beat. That's the length of the beat. Oh, so I, duh. Yeah, but duh. I pulled it. And uh, this is a day that I uh, was lucky enough to be working on Z Smoke's computer, mm-hmm. you know, as I, that's where everything's made. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just recording for fun. He was off doing, he was at work or something. And uh, I had made a couple songs that day and the open was there for Hopeless in the middle. Um, you know, there was an open in the middle. Basically, I did the hook. Yeah. And the hook is pretty short. It's kind of like, Again, almost like a like the song again, 
you know, it's kind of like overly simple in a way, but then it's like kind of confusing the way like the themes like roll into each other. And the somberness comes from like, you know, like this, yeah, this like, you know, what is the reactive party vibe and then living in a place like Portland where like, you know, I've just been so dissociated by living here and that's sort of like the hypnotic sort of spinning sort of feeling I try to give with that hook. Mm -hmm. And there's all these things of like, you know, it's a good place for like a young person to live um, and have a, have a good time. But there's also like, I live in a neighborhood that's like a little bit scary sometimes, Mm. even at like the playground near me, there was like an incident that happened that literally like really freaked me out. Um, You know, it's like, uh, it's just an interesting place to live. And so that all sort of rolled into that, just like what sort of came out when I wrote that. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it from the outside, I was like, people aren't really going to like understand this when they see it necessarily. They're just sort of going to get, get a vibe, but the vibe is going to be enough to sort of like roll them into their own thought process. Um, And that's why I like that. But when I wrote it, uh, you know, later in that day, I was like, yeah, one of the songs I made today like smoke had already listened to everything I'd worked on, but mm-hmm. he didn't like know what was what. And I was like, yeah, like I think one of them could be for hopeless. And he's like, I know which one. And I was like, uh, yeah, I was like, we got to send it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what made you pick the name for that track? Or how did you go about picking the name for that track? I should say. Yeah. I mean, I, I wrote the track and way up was just the, like, you know, the thing that came out and it was sort of like, again, the whole reversal of, I would make a part of the the hook and then I would pull in into the next part. I would pull some of the words from the the last one, but I would re reassociate their usage mm-hmm. and then sort of it would add this like extra repetitiveness, but then there was still like a change of words. Um, and so like way up just felt like, you know, like just, I'm just like the whole, the whole album is sort of just like a rising theme through it. But then, when you get way up to a certain point, you're obviously going to have a low. So it's like the, the describing of the way up Mm. and then the connection between how there's a somber feeling is like the problems with being way up. Gotcha. Oh yeah. Yeah. And And then then, hopeless obviously killed it one more time real quick. Yep. I watched his whole interview with you and it was so great because I was at work and I was just like, work sucks, but I was able to watch that. And it was just like, so great to just spend 30 minutes just like watching hopeless and just, hearing everything that he was able to talk about with his album, um, which was just so incredible. I mean, just like such a high level of artistry that I have, I have so much respect for. So, you know, getting to have his assistance on the things that I work on, getting to see the things that he is able to achieve on his own, which are like just yeah, way, way up. Yeah, very much yeah. so. Fucking also, up. rarely have other people bring up pe- other people's episodes on an episode. So that was, that was, that was wild. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, but no, dude, the dude is super talented. And I mean, that was a really strong feature. And I guess I'm curious to know, because you don't have many features on the album as a whole. You know, you've got, you know, Z-Smoke in the beginning there. You've got Hopeless here. And there may be another Z-Smoke feature in a little bit. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah. What made you decide to have them as the features or features in general? Um, You know, just the natural, like, working on songs and just finding where they fit Mm -hmm. um with z smoke we have so many songs we've made (laughs) um after i released the album like on the deluxe album there's going to be two songs with him at least there's going to be eris moon on there oh hell yeah yeah eris moon yeah uh song i made with wayne gray Mm -hmm. i'm gonna wayne gray tag that on the end there just because it's all part of the whole thing Mm -hmm. even though that song's already out crossed out um and then, you know, Kai, he's a good friend of mine. We've worked on a lot of stuff together. He was part of the whole start of this. Um, he's also on the deluxe and on the original album. So, yeah, I mean, you know, like, I, I just try to reflect the things that I love, the albums that I loved, and a lot of them are kind of like mainstream, like epic kind of albums. Like, I love Travis Scott. I love Don Tolliver. Um, I, I love what Z Smoke has put out and, um, you know, sort of like melded those things and all the other things I've liked in my life. And then what I see, you know, what I've seen in hyperpop and, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. So it's like, I, I try to like bring in the, the features that make sense to me, but, um, I didn't really have to reach very far outside of the, the people that like I trust and, um, am inspired by. Yeah. 
I mean, it helps that they were already working on the album with you to some degree as well. So I imagine the accessibility was there. But I just, I, because I myself, like I said, I kind of, kind of come from the realm of bands. So I was, we didn't have a lot of features, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just, I'm always, I'm always curious about the the inner workings of like the decision of like how you go about choosing to add people on. Cause that's just one that's kind of foreign to me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, it's kind of a first step in that direction. This, this whole thing is definitely a first step for me. Um, and I haven't really like delved in the world of, you know, like, I feel like what having a feature, what that means is you have a defined sound mm -hmm. to a certain degree and somebody wants to like tap into that. Um, as far as like the modern, what we're dealing with. And I have so much respect for like deep artistry from like a more, you know, classic perspective. And then I almost always just want to challenge myself to sort of match up with like what the world demands, um, today. So when I talk about those things, I think that's important, but, um, you know, like the, the possibility of like just connecting those dots and bringing in other people that, you know, just like Hopeless's sound is something that he's built throughout this, his time, Z Smoke mm -hmm. sound. So adding them has some context. Um, it's, you know, and it's like, those are the people I'm inspired by in this world. Like, I don't really, I haven't even had to look much farther than like the people I was just straight up introduced to right off the bat. Yeah. And it's cool to me like that. Like, that's exactly what I, what I like. And it's like, it's just so trippy. <laughs> oh yeah. I love that. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get back into another track. And this next one coming up is called Dead Wrong. Bye bye, I get down. They won't catch me once I've taken off. Baby, this burning, burn, burn rubber that you're smelling. Yeah, I know. I got a split dash. You should send me off. You know, it's straight to the cash. Never tend to solve. I try to sell a couple jobs, but I just did all right, and we're back again. And this time we're talking about Dead Wrong. Now, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but this is the ninth out of ten tracks, and yet again, still hitting us with new sounds. You just do not give up. Like, right from the beginning with the super hard-hitting, like, stutter intro, which I thought was really fun, and then there was this one instance, one tiny, teeny instance of this, like, dubstep bass sound. It only happens for one moment, and then it doesn't happen again in the rest of the track. I was like, huh, what a unique choice of sound for that one instance, which I know was, I assume, in the track already, but I yeah. thought that was just kind of a, an interesting earworm for nearly the end. But I also appreciated the pitched down vocals. Like that I thought was a cool change to add in as well, and it just kind of gave it that vibe through it. What was the, uh, I guess... I'm just going to let you kind of take the reins on this track to tell us some more about it. Yeah. So, um, definitely again, you know, things of the people that helped me out with this. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like it was important to me to be able to write the hook, write the verse, mm -hmm. get those exactly as I wanted them. And to not like throw something else weird in the beginning, but to give you like a melodic introduction. Mm hmm. Um, so hopeless added, uh, you know, like the, the lower vocals, mm -hmm. um, transposed down one octave and, uh, you know, a little bit of a stutter in there. Um, that's the combination of Z smoke and hopeless. And then, uh, it's interesting because, um, the beat there is from a producer named Oh My Gone mm. and he's a really awesome producer he's this kid from like i don't know venezuela i think mm -hmm. um and if it's not venezuela it's something that's you know easily interchangeable yeah not just like loosely interchangeable um and he's like 19 or something but he's kind of like under fire from some hip hop or hyper pop artists for like you know not always sourcing his sounds correctly mm. maybe taking them from some people and it's unfortunate because I look at every hyper pop beat and I see what he puts out. Mm -hmm. I know that he's not just like ripping people all day long. Um, but you know, like hopeless specifically, it was like, you know, had the courtesy to let me know that he knows people that don't necessarily fuck with him. Mm. So, you know, I really like gone beats though. They just, they work with me. 
So, yeah. um, you know, the world is a crazy place. <laughs> Very much um, so. But, you know, he killed it with that beat. It's so insane. Um, it's one of my, you know, all these songs that I've, I've put on this album, I've performed plenty of times at this point uh, for the most part. And that's one of the main ones that people just come back to me and like, you know, it's one of those that's like right on the nose sort of. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still a little bit like trippy and dissociative um, in the sense of like, you know, like it's, uh, you know, like it's not literal, obviously, like it's a talking about like just going through life, like trying to take shortcuts and stuff. And, and obviously you run into problems. It's just not like a cool vibe. Um, people don't really fuck with it when you're like just taking, you know, taking yours and not really like giving back sort of thing. And, um, so maybe that almost matches the fact that it's from gone or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't, definitely see I don't want to relation there. put that there, but, um, you know, it's, that's life. Um, so I've, you know, I've been doing everything I can to get by, but like, even like traffic, like there's just a song about like driving fast, driving, cutting through traffic, stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. the amount of traffic in Portland, that's one of the most fucked up things in the city that like stops us from being able to get ahead and really just have like a consistent life is like, you, you know, somebody who works for, you know, like people across town, like I have to travel all the way there and then they don't even have the respect of sometimes like tipping me and stuff like that. Like, yeah. it's like, it's, I sit in traffic for so long that it's just, it just drives me insane. Um, and I'm just trying to like make my way. Um, so it's simple things like that that are like built into these like larger, more like aggressive tones. Um, and, but literally, I mean, road rage is crazy. Like people get so aggressive. Oh man. Just, yeah. I don't yeah. know. So, I mean, not to, again, just right on the nose, like, um, I just sort of went for it. And sometimes I feel like songs like that don't always hit for me because there's, you know, like, it just almost feels immature, but that one, like, it just sort of like, it holds its own in that. Like, it's like the points that I feel like I'm stepping into an area that makes me feel, uh, vulnerable in a sense of like, lyrically, it just brings back to like the main point of like what the whole song is about and fits into the main theme. Yeah, totally. Well, thank you for that breakdown. That very... Very, very well-informed breakdown for sure. Um, And uh, I had a question because I was going to ad-lib this one and I totally lost it. I apologize. But we're going to go ahead and we've got one last track to go. So we're going to get through that one, do a little wrap-up, and then I got a couple more for you. Sweet. And this last track is called Now featuring Z Smoke. All right, and we're back. And that was the final track on the album. And I mean, we're going to do it again. One more shout out to Z Smoke for the feature. And honestly, you definitely decided to save a quality jam for the last track. That was a banger. Like it just, I don't think it could have gone anywhere in the album even and like hit as hard as it did. To close it out that way was such a solid decision. It was just such a big track. I mean, Z was flexing on it the whole time. And it even kind of created this opportunity to like circle back to the beginning. Cause I'm one of those people I just hit repeat all. So once it gets to the end, it just starts way at, right at the start. Yeah. And I purposely let it run through to the first track just to see what it would feel like when it circled around. And I think that it really just, it all tied together really perfectly. And now that we've come to the end of the album, I could definitely say Donnie Darko was my favorite one for sure. That one just, that one just checked all the boxes for me. Yeah. But I mean, all the tracks that we talked about on here, like easily second place. Like I could easily go through and like find things I enjoyed about pretty much all of them. And there's a few that we didn't even talk about because I just didn't want to make this a billion mile long episode. Yeah. But I just like the first track, I'm going to ask, what made you decide to make that the last track? Yeah, I mean, the song's called Now. You know, in a sense, it's like representative of now in the time frame of you know it gets to the end of the story that should be now Mm -hmm. there's a deluxe album it's not now it was like now then yeah (laughs) but it's now now when will then be now sorry i did yeah so we're here (laughs) and uh so the song you know z smoke goes crazy he's unreal yeah i don't know what to do popping off if i start thinking about z smoke i just again i just dissociate i'm just like this dude's crazy um but yeah i mean the song is talking about 
just doing what you got to do in life because you're going to (laughs) die. Um, you know, whether or not you're religious or not, like, uh, the song just talks about like your spirit holding out, um, just so it can sit in a hole in the ground. Uh, so why should I, why the fuck should I care? Um, I'm just going to do what I want and like send me to hell because that's where all my friends will be, I guess. (laughs) It's a little dramatic, but, uh, you know, I, no, I'm, I'm a good person. Like, I don't really mean that, but, um, you know, it just goes back to just sort of being expressive and, um, and trying to wrap up the whole, just something larger than just like, you know, oh, I'm, um, having trouble dealing with the breakup. It's like, you know, that my questions in life are much deeper. Yeah. Um, my, my path in life to me is much deeper. Um, so to, to take a, a really like strong vibe like that, connect it back to something with like a religious theme, connect it back to something with, uh, just a connection to just struggling with, um, life and stuff like that um it just sort of worked and that's where i liked it and then it definitely sort of you know that beat at the end on the very last 10 seconds where it just goes into like the slow down you know chopped mm-hmm. and screwed type thing just a great way to end off a 10 song album just really just like yeah breaking it all down and then uh, again like it's so far from the beginning of the tape as mm-hmm. far as the sound the vibe um you you go from what sounds like uh, you know, like I'm trying to be talk about, you know, my feelings and try to create like sympathy to just like this sort of like just aggressive sort of vibe is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a question. It's a, it, for me, that's artistic because I'm not, that's not who I am, but it's what I am presenting. And, uh, mm-hmm. again, if you look at the themes of like the clothing that I have from shout out, fuck clout right here, um, fuck clout. you know, there's a, there's a, progression of the the shirt that you see on the album cover mm-hmm. the green and like splotchy blue kind of one and then the the jacket i have on right now just sort of the two sides of like you know the angel and the devil mm-hmm. on the shoulder um and what they represent and uh you know they're both they're both sides i'm not trying to get too crazy about that again um and get too like overly on the nose but yeah it's just a sort of loose um connection between those those sort of themes no totally and I, th- I, now that we have talked about it enough, you know, that we've gotten through the whole album and discussed it. I think it's interesting to hear through your answers, this like level of, I, I don't know if I wouldn't say that you've gotten over your situation. Cause I don't think anybody really ever gets over these situations in a way, but there's a growth, there's a progression. Like, you know, you have really roadmapped your at in the beginning, I was this. And in the end, I am now this. And I think that that, that is, I guess, affirming in a lot of ways. Like I, I really like, cause you know, I, you know, it's, I don't talk about me much on the show, but I've gone through similar in the recent past. So I can correlate with a lot of your answers in my own way. And I think that it just through your answers, it's very obvious that you have used not it so much as like your way of getting past things, but you have gotten through things alongside it and you've clearly poured a lot of that into it. And I just, I, I appreciate that on a personal level. Yeah, I, I appreciate that too, the way you describe it. Um, you know, I sort of like let the energy flow in, but didn't always restrict it to be totally literal to what, exactly what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it found its place where it was. And uh, yeah, it was definitely like kind of alongside it is, is how I describe it. And um, again, there's, you know, all these times that there's themes where you're sort of questioning um, you know, like I say something that sort of brings up an emotion in some way, whether it's good or bad. And it's just really to sort of like, um, you know, just bring up those feelings in a more raw way mm-hmm. and, um, just address that side of things. And then for me, like, you know, sometimes there's times where I'm not nice to people. And then there's some times where I'm too nice to people. And so sometimes you have to look and be like, okay, like, am I being too nice or do I need to just admit like, okay, this is not good. So I'm going to say it's not good. Like it doesn't feel good. It's not a good, doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, but like, that's what's happening right now. So like suck it up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you sharing everything that you have about the album. We, uh, we only have a couple more songs or questions to go, uh, but I'm going to save those for after our, our two wrap ups here. And since 
you know, we've kind of broken the original format anyway. So I'm just going to take this opportunity and say, is there anybody that you would like to, you know, put on or shout out that hasn't already been mentioned in the episode so far? Yes. I'd like to take about seven minutes to bring up Z Smoke, Wayne Gray, Hopeless, Alan, Kai, all the producers on the album, Ghost Rage, um, who else? Oh, Doinky Main. Definitely Doinky Main. Mm-hmm. Everybody from the show, y'all killed it. Thank you very much. Um, and just anybody who's listening, that's, um, you're the, obviously, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, if y'all have not, if y'all chose to watch this first and then go check it out after, you're slacking. Go give it a go. Go give it a, a full listen. I guess after this now because we're gonna wrap it up shortly. But go do that for sure if you haven't already. Um, and then go ahead and just for the format of the show, go ahead and look into the camera and give everybody your, like ats and things like that. Yeah, you can find me online uh, on Instagram at mitchhd.x. Um, you can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music as Mitch HD, no spaces. And uh, yeah, look up Z Smoke, look up Hopeless, look up Wayne Gray. Those are the people that I fuck with and a lot of other people. So, oh yeah. All right. Now, like I said, we've got a couple more questions, but I'm going to steal the camera for just a second now. As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And one more shout out to the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. Guarantee you're going to like it. And with that being said, the final questions. And uh, this one, this first one's kind of a short one, so we'll plow through it real quick. If you had to pick one song off the album to recommend to people, like Elevator Pitch Moment, which one would you recommend they check out first? I mean, you're right. Donnie Darko really okay. is got to be it for sure. It's oh, just, yeah. just, it's fun. It's great. It's a quality jam, but it still holds the like. It. Yeah. I don't think it gives away everything from the album, but it gives a very good idea of what will be in store in it for sure. Hell yeah, right. I'd say so. And then the second one is super open open ended. You can answer it however you choose to interpret it. But what are some fun memories you have from the making of the album? That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, just like one of the best years of my life. One of the like hardest years of my life for sure. Um, but that was what made a lot of these times great. Um, but yeah, just the different times I got to perform these with my friends and in different places and, um, you know, all the things in between too. Like, uh, yeah, just everything was just natural. Uh, I always had dreams of making music in different ways and I have in different ways, but, um, there's always the feeling of like something might get in the way as far as, you know, life, you know, you need to, you need to be successful if you're going to do something, whatever, like things like that. Um, it just always like happened how it should happen. And that's sort of reflected in, again, in the album of just like, I just feel like I'm just like stepping in the next like obvious footstep that fate like keeps putting in front of me. I'm just like, okay, like cool. (laughs) Like, this is awesome. Like, let's just keep doing good stuff. And I'll just keep on trying to put my best foot forward. But like, yeah, just fun at every step of the way. Um, and hopefully getting over some, uh, some pretty crazy humps. (laughs) Oh yeah. I, I really appreciate that you led with. It was one of the best years of your life, given how much had like led into like, processing something that had been unpleasant to happen for that so that i mean i i know i've mentioned it so many times already but just like i really appreciate your tenacity with the album i really appreciate the design of the album and i think that it's i mean it's a, it's a quality listen like for anybody i don't think it's just going to be for people who like attach themselves to a genre you know what i mean and so i i really appreciate you coming in and sharing it with us today i'm glad we got to sit down and talk about it And uh, this has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jambox Tuned In. I'm Jimmy. I'm Mitch HD. And we're signing off. Later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a podcast.
Pops, this is the show. Keep jamming.